Hello and welcome! I got this interesting mail of a trading strategy to code and double check from Aaron. I'm going to quickly go over Aaron's mail, explain my amendments and also will summarize the strategy on the next slides. So the strategy is as follows. Calculate the difference between high and low of the first candle of the day. For crypto we are just taking the first one hour. We are multiplying that with Fibonacci ratios. I'm not going to cover what exactly Fibonacci ratios are because they are just multipliers with certain properties, but I will link some resources below. Add the above values to the high and subtract them from the low. Here I will deviate. I'm only showing the long side and ignore short selling for now. And I also do not think that taking the high as a reference is a good idea. Instead, I will add these values to the close instead of the high. We will buy whenever the price breaches the 0.618 level. Short selling is irrelevant, so I just skip this part here. Target 1 is 1.618 ratio. I will take this, but I won't cover target 2. Just to make things easier. Stop loss could be the 0.3 level or the high. I think this is way too tight, so I'm going to just take the entry level with a negative sign. So simply minus 0.618. So to give you a visual idea, you're getting certain levels and the levels indicate signals. So the lowest line is the stop loss. The midline is the entry and the top line is the exit or target profit. And once again, how are these lines constructed? First, you calculate the difference between high and low of the first hour candle on each day. Then you multiply this difference with the Fibonacci levels. Then you add those values to the close. You're buying when the price is above the 0.6 whatsoever level. This is this line. You're selling when you hit the 1.6 level or the minus 0.6 level. This is a video series, first video. So this video is about the logic and calculation. In the second part, we are doing a long-term backtest. This is going to be very interesting. And third part includes short selling. Important disclaimer, cryptocurrency and in specific automated trading is bearing a huge amount of risk and may result in a total loss of your invested capital. Cryptocurrencies are not regulated. Concepts shown in this video are not an investment advice. Video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Alright, let's get started. As you see, we need some libraries and I set up a function here pulling historical candlestick data from Binance. I've covered this function in some of my previous videos, so I will just link a video explaining what exactly this is doing in the video description. In a nutshell, you're just providing a symbol, Bitcoin USDT for instance, and provide a starting date. And with that, you're getting hourly open, high, low, close data. You see hourly data here, starting in the beginning of January until today. Next, I wanna pull the first hour candle for a given date. So let's define some date here. So for simplicity, let's just take the first uh, January here. And then I'm screening the data frame for all rows from this date on. Now, I only want to get the first hour candle here, which is this one. This candle, this midnight candle is closing at midnight, right? So this is the last candle of the previous day. The actual first candle, the first trading hour is closing at one o'clock here. So this is the actual candle we need as our calculation basis. So I'm just screening for the second row here by simply slicing. So now as you see, we're getting the one o'clock candle and this is what we need for our calculations. Now to make things easier, we can transform this data frame into a series by using pandas handy squeeze function. So this is just transforming a data frame into a series. And now we see we have open, high, low, close and volume in a series with the name of the actual timestamp here. 
Now let's store that in series and print that out. And first of all, we are calculating the difference which we need. And the difference is the difference between high and low. So we're simply taking series high minus series low and have calculated our difference. So let's store that somewhere, just calling that diff, printing it out that you know what I'm doing here. And next step would be to multiply this difference with the Fibonacci ratios. So I'm going to store the Fibonacci ratios here in a list, provide the stop loss ratio, as I said, simply the entry ratio times minus one, then the entry ratio and the target profit ratio here, right? So this is stop loss, entry, target profit. And now I simply have to multiply every element of this list with the difference. So most straightforward way would be a list comprehension, i times div for i in ratios, right? So with that, you're simply multiplying this, this, and this. Now, additionally, we have to add that to the close, right? So I'm simply providing plus series dot close. So I'm simply adding the close value to the, these values here, as we are expected to do. So these are our levels for the first January. And I think to understand what's going on, I chart it here or I plot it here so that you see what I actually did. So first of all, I'm just plotting the close for only the January. So I'm just taking the 24 hours here, right? So I'm going to show you how this is looking in data frame. So you see we are getting uh, first, uh, or rather the midnight candle and then all the subsequent rows here, and then ending at the the midnight candle of the second here. So we have the time series for the close looking like this. And now if I plot my levels horizontally, you see what's actually going on. So I'm copy pasting the syntax from other screen because it's too much uh, writing work here. So this is simply uh, setting up a horizontal line on your uh, chart and I'm taking the uh, zero level here actually have to define that as levels here, sorry for that. So my levels are simply the list comprehension and I'm just plotting them on this chart here. So this is the idea, so stop loss level, this one here, entry level, this one here, exit or target profit level, this one here, okay? So if I plot that, you will see what we got here. So this is our stop loss, this is our entry and this is our uh, target profit. Now, what's interesting here in this case is that we hit the stop loss, but as you see, we are hitting it before we are entering, right? So the stop loss in this case uh, wouldn't trigger because we're not in a position here at this time horizon. So this is a time series, stop loss is being hit, but we basically don't care about this because we are not in a position at that point in time. So we are entering here, and then we are exiting somewhere here. So actually this trade uh, went profitable uh, without taking transaction costs into consideration for now, but looks quite nice uh, for the first day of January here. Now let's, so I just plotted that to show you what I actually did in these steps. But now let's um, yeah, formalize that all or how can I say that parameter tries that all or whatsoever. So just putting all the steps I just showed you in a function, right? So I want to have a function which is providing me those levels, get levels of course, for a given date. So I want to have that flexible, that I have a date and it is providing me those lines for a given date. Because the first hour candle is always the benchmark for those levels and I need the first hour candle for each day here, right? So once again, just to uh, make the steps clear, I'm taking a, a values array here. Then I'm starting with the stop loss, which is the negative entry ratio, then the entry ratio and the exit. 
And then I'm pulling the series, which is simply taking the data frame, screening for the given date, then only the first hour candle, and then squeezes it to a series, same as we did above. So these are the exact same steps, but in a function. Then we are calculating the diff, taking the high of the series minus uh, the low. Then we have the diff, and then we pull the levels by simply uh, taking the close and we're adding the ratio times the diff here. So I uh, multiplied with diff for i in values. So simply the difference times this, times this, times th this, plus the series close price, as I did above. Then we are returning the levels. And this function is pretty nice because you're getting the levels based on those uh, Fibonacci ratios or whatever you want to call them uh, for a given date. So we could pull for the first January, we are just getting the exact same levels as above here, of course, right? And we can also do that for the second January, third, fourth, and so on, right? So very nice function is providing you those lines for any given date, okay? And we will actually need this function for the follow-up video where we are backtesting that uh, going way more back in time, right? Because I want to backtest that for uh, one year uh, base here. But for this video, I'm just showing you the basics as I said. So next step, I'm just going to um, check the buying and selling signals for this date. So I'm simply calculating this, what you see visually here uh, in code, right? So I want to um, backtest the very first date of January here, right? So how can I do that? I'm simply pulling my stop loss entry and target profit by calling this function for the first January. And I'm storing them just in, in variables here so that we have an easier time assigning. So this is our stop loss here. Uh, this is our entry and this is our target profit here. So exactly the same numbers as here. All right, I have them in variables. And now I'm setting up a day one data frame, right? So I only want to have my uh, data frame from the given date on. So my given date is the 1st January in this case. And then I'm only screening for the rows which are actually uh, uh, on this date and store that in day one. And with that, I only have the first January here up until the midnight candle here, all right? And what I need to do now is to make things easier, I need to pull the open one row back here. Reason behind that is I wanna check my signals row to row. And if I get a signal hit here on the close, I want to directly pull the buy price and the buy price is always on the next candles open, right? So I'm pulling the open in this same row here by shifting the open column one row back. And I'm calling that price because this is the actual buying and selling price here. Now important to mention at this point here is that when coding the strategy, I'm only evaluating the signals on the close. Meaning I check if the close is above the entry for my buying condition. And I check is the close above or equal to the target profit or below or equal to the stop loss. So I'm ignoring, I'm fully ignoring all intra candle movements here. I'm just evaluating on the close price. All right, this is important for this strategy. I'm not taking intra candle movements into in con consideration. So I'm always taking a look at the close and check, is it above the entry? And when I enter the position, I'm checking is the close above the target profit or below the stop loss. And this is what we are going to code. 
So yeah, let's set up a flag here, which is taking care of if I'm currently in a position or not. So and initially I'm not in a position. And now I'm looping for index row in day one it rows. So this is simply looping over all rows in the day one data frame. And now I'm checking if I'm not in a position, if not in position, which is initially the case, and my close is above my entry, above or equal to my entry, then I want to print the row price because the price is the next candles open. Right, so this is my buy price. And when this is happening, I want to set my in position flag to true because then I bought and then I'm in a position. And now I have to take care of the selling conditions. I have to check if I'm in a position. Then I want to check two things. First, is my close above or equal to my target profit or is my close small or equal to my stop loss? And in both cases or in, in either of those cases, I want to print out my row price to get my selling price in that case. Then I'm setting my in position flag to false and I'm also breaking the loop. Why am I breaking the loop? Because on that day, let's go back to the chart. This is my trade. Here I'm not doing anything. I'm entering and I'm exiting. I don't want to do anything after that. This is my trade. So if I'm out of the position for that day, I'm good. All right. So after this is happening, I don't want to do anything anymore. Right. So once I sold for that day, I'm out. I want to break the, the loop. Okay. So if we execute that, we are getting our buy price and our sell price. Our sell price minus our buy price is our profit. So we made a very slight profit here. All right. As we also saw here. Okay. And that's already it for this video. In the next video, it's going to be very, very exciting because I'm going back more than one year and check every date for the profits here and backtest over the long term if that strategy would have been profitable taking the assumptions made in this video. This is going to be very interesting. So yeah, leave a like, share this video if you're interested in that to make the continuation of the series possible. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video and thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.